Director Chad Stahelski has revealed that the original cut of John Wick Chapter 4 was around 3 hours and 45 minutes long. The film was cut down to around 2 hours and 50 minutes long and has the longest runtime of any film to date in the John Wick franchise. Prior to Jeffrey Dean Morgan's casting as Negan in The Walking Dead, actor Matthew Lillard was considered for the role. Lillard approached the audition with a humorous interpretation. Subsequently, he was called back for a second audition, tasked with combining humour and seriousness. Despite his efforts, Lillard ultimately was not chosen for the part. The sequel to 2019's Joker, Joker Folly Adieu, is said to have a much larger budget than the first movie. Joker had a budget of around $70 million and the film grossed $1.1 billion globally. The sequel is said to have a budget of around $200 million. This is reportedly due to the star Joaquin Phoenix's salary increase after winning an Academy Award, along with bringing on Lady Gaga to star and write music for the movie. Notably, a large part of the budget is reportedly allocated to licensing of famous songs that will feature in the film. In the run-up to the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds called Logan, the previous time Hugh Jackman played Wolverine, potentially the greatest comic book adaptation ever made. Hugh Jackman had previously intended for Logan to be his final time playing the character of Wolverine. In Robert Eggers' Nosferatu, Willem Dafoe had taken on his second cinematic role associated with the iconic character. Previously, Dafoe portrayed Max Schreck, the actor who originally embodied Count Orlok in the 1922 film. Shadow of the Vampire was released in 2000 and earned Willem Dafoe an Oscar nomination. In Robert Eggers' movie Nosferatu, the director originally sought to cast Anna Taylor-Joy and Harry Styles as Ellen Hutter and Count Orlok, respectively. Eggers had previously worked with Anna Taylor-Joy on two previous films, The Witch and The Northman. Both Anna Taylor-Joy and Harry Styles dropped out of the project due to other work commitments and were replaced by Lily Rose Depp and Bill Skarsgård. Jeremy Renner had been approached to reprise the role of William Brandt in Mission Impossible Fallout, having starred in the two previous movies in the series, Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. However, the script saw his character killed off in the opening minutes of the movie, leading Renner to decline to return to the role. Renner is open to returning to the character in the future, however. With the casting of Benedict Cumberbatch in Star Trek Into Darkness, Many fans speculated that he would be playing the character Khan, who first featured in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. However, this was denied multiple times by Cumberbatch. The film's director, J.J. Abrams, and the stars Alice Eve and Carl Urban also denied this rumour, stating he was playing the character John Harrison. However, this was simply misdirection and Benedict Cumberbatch was indeed playing Khan. Though, for the first part of the movie, Cumberbatch's character uses the alias John Harrison. Kevin Costner was moved to tears after debuting his movie, Horizon, an American Saga, at the Cannes Film Festival. The film had received a seven-minute standing ovation after being screened. The film was a passion project for Costner, who even left his hit show Yellowstone in order to work on the film. Marvel president Kevin Feige had initially advised Hugh Jackman not to return to the role of Wolverine for the upcoming movie Deadpool and Wolverine. Feige said, don't come back, you had the greatest ending in history with Logan, that's not something we should undo. Despite this, Jackman is returning to the role for the tenth time. In the movie Air, director Ben Affleck made a notable casting decision based on a specific request from basketball legend Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan explicitly requested that the role of his mother Dolores be played by the talented actress Viola Davis.
During the filming of Mrs. Doubtfire, actor Robin Williams improvised so extensively that the filmmakers have disclosed the possibility of creating three distinct versions of the movie, a PG-13 cut, an R-rated cut, and an NC-17 cut, each containing varying degrees of Williams's unscripted material. Before Dune Part 2's official release, the director Denis Villeneuve arranged a private screening of the film for a fan battling cancer. It is for people like this fan, Villeneuve remarked, that filmmakers strive to create meaningful cinematic experiences. Initially offered the lead role of Maximus in Gladiator, Mel Gibson declined the role, citing his age as a factor. Antonio Banderas was also reportedly considered for the role too. Russell Crowe was later cast and subsequently won an Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of the character. In the production of the X-Men film, screenwriter David Hayter encountered a proposal from the studio to transform the beloved character Wolverine from his iconic Canadian roots to an American identity. One suggestion floated was to have Wolverine hail from Alaska instead. Hater, aware of fans' strong attachment to Wolverine's Canadian heritage, firmly asserted that any alteration to his origin would not be well received by the audience. Amazon had asked Anne Hathaway to return for a sequel to The Idea of You, as the film was such a success for the streaming service. However, Anne Hathaway reportedly refused to return, stating that one is enough. Alec Guinness was initially hesitant to play Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars because it was a science fiction film. However, he decided to read the script after hearing positive reviews of George Lucas's previous film, American Graffiti. Guinness thought the dialogue was terrible, but he was so captivated by the story that he kept on reading the script, and thus took the role. Glenn Powell has recently revealed that he had auditioned for the role of physicist Ernest Lawrence in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, but lost out to Josh Hartnett. Powell has said that he hopes to work with Christopher Nolan on another project in the near future, though. Overwhelmed with emotion, Chris Evans' mother shed tears upon witnessing the scene in Avengers Endgame featuring an elderly version of Steve Rogers. The resemblance between her son and her father, enhanced by the prosthetic makeup, was striking and deeply evocative for her. Elton John, who wrote songs for the first Lion King movie, is said to be very upset that he wasn't asked back to work on the live-action sequel, Mufasa the Lion King. According to someone close to John, the singer and songwriter is deeply hurt after being snubbed from working on Mufasa. Lin-Manuel Miranda is working on the movie, writing original songs instead. Francis Ford Coppola self-financed his upcoming movie Megalopolis, which has been a passion project for the director for many decades. The director said that there are so many people who, when they die, say, I wish I had done that. When I die, I will say, I got to do that. Coppola was able to finance the $120 million project by selling a massive stake in his winery business. Anna Taylor-Joy's character Fury Osa only has around 30 lines of dialogue throughout the film's runtime. Tom Hardy only had 60 lines of dialogue in Mad Max Fury Road. The film's director, George Miller, has said that dialogue only slows down the pace of the movie and he prefers the actors to convey their feelings through facial expressions and mannerisms instead. Harrison Ford had only signed a two-picture deal when making the Star Wars movies and would have needed a new contract where he could have demanded more money to return for the next movie. For this reason, George Lucas had the character Han Solo frozen in carbonite to get rid of the character if Harrison Ford ended up not choosing to return. All the actors playing pirates on the crew of Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest were created using motion capture and CGI, with the exception of Stellan Skarsgård's bootstrap Bill Turner. Skarsgård wanted to use full prosthetics in order to get into character. He stated, I was the only one on set with real prosthetics on. 
everyone else on that ship showed up five minutes before we started shooting and had dots put on, and away they went. I had been there for six hours, but the thing is, I like it. I like to see the artists paint, if that makes sense. Harvey Keitel had originally been cast as Captain Willard in Apocalypse Now and had actually shot scenes for around two weeks. The director, Francis Ford Coppola, thought he wasn't right after those two weeks and replaced him with Martin Sheen. The original screenplay for John Wick had the titular character be around the age of 75. The script described John Wick as a Clint Eastwood type. It was only after Keanu Reeves showed interest in the script that the role was rewritten to have John Wick as a younger character. Actor J.K. Simmons, who voices the character Omni-Man in the animated series Invincible, has said he has no interest in playing the character live-action, despite the fans calling for it. Simmons says that he does not think the live-action Omni-Man should be played by a 68-year-old actor. He did suggest he would like to see either Ryan Reynolds or Hugh Jackman take on the role in live-action. Actor Dev Patel, who also made his directorial debut with the movie Monkey Man, was injured several times whilst he filmed scenes for the movie. Throughout production, Patel broke his hand, broke two of his toes, tore his shoulder and got an eye infection. Notably, Patel broke his hand on the first day they were shooting fighting scenes. Director Denny Villeneuve has stated that he would only return for another instalment of Dune, adapting the story from Dune Messiah, if he was able to make it better than part two. Villeneuve has completed the script for the project, but wants to work on a different movie before returning to the Dune franchise. Whilst promoting Dune Part 2, director Denny Villeneuve stated that movies have been corrupted by television. The director said the following, I hate dialogue. Dialogue is for the theatre and the television. I don't remember movies for a good line. I remember movies for a strong image. I'm not interested in dialogue at all. Pure image and sound, that is cinema. But it is something not obvious when you watch movies today. Movies have been corrupted by television. Actor John Burnfall was only able to appear in episodes of The Bear because the cast and crew flew out to where he was located and shot scenes with the actor during his lunch breaks whilst he worked on another project. Echo reportedly had a budget of $40 million, which is the lowest of any of the Marvel Studios' Disney Plus shows that have been produced to date. She-Hulk Attorney at Law had the highest at $225 million. Actor Hiroyuki Sanada, who plays Lord Yoshi Toronaga in FX's miniseries Shogun, did not use a stunt double for the show. He did all the fighting, horse riding and stunt work himself, despite being 63 years old. The upcoming movie Alien Romulus was initially set to go direct to streaming services. However, the studio was very impressed with what they saw in the first few days of filming, to which they decided that the movie should go to theatres first instead. Adam Wingard, director of Godzilla Kong The New Empire, revealed that the scene where Godzilla sleeps in the Colosseum in Rome was inspired by his cat Mischief. Since its initial development in 2010, the remake of the 1980s television series The Fall Guy has undergone several casting changes for its lead role, Colt Seavers. Before Ryan Gosling was cast, numerous actors were considered for the role, including Tom Cruise, Dwayne Johnson, Nicolas Cage, Jason Statham and Keanu Reeves. Since the premiere of the Fallout TV series on Amazon Video, sales of the game Fallout 4, one of the games on which the series is based, have witnessed a notable surge in Europe, with a remarkable increase of 7,000%. Director Zack Snyder has revealed that actor Tom Cruise was keen on playing the character Rorschach in the movie Watchmen. Snyder said that obviously Tom Cruise could have done the role, but Jackie Earl Haley had already been cast.
With a production budget of approximately $50 million, Alex Garland's new movie, Civil War, represents a significant milestone for the studio A24. This is the highest budget that the studio has allocated to an in-house production to date. Actress Ella Purnell, who portrays one of the protagonists in the Fallout TV series, Lucy McLean, revealed that she played the video games in order to prepare her for her role in the show. However, she states she wasn't very good at the game and it annoyed her as she is quite competitive. Joker Folly Adieu, sequel to 2019's Joker, had widely been reported to be a musical. The film's director, Todd Phillips, revealed at CinemaCon that the sequel doesn't veer too far away from the first film, but music is an essential part of the movie. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny underperformed at the box office and had a massive production budget due to extra costs with safety due to the pandemic. The film had a budget of just under $300 million and only grossed $384 million worldwide. Disney has said that the movie made a loss of around $130 million for the company. Dev Patel's directorial debut Monkey Man was initially set to go straight to streaming services. It was only after director Jordan Peele, best known for his movie Get Out, saw a cut of the movie that he pushed for it to have a cinematic release. Peele was able to join the movie as an executive producer and the movie is being released across cinemas and is currently receiving rave reviews. George R. R. Martin and showrunners of HBO's Game of Thrones series have stated that they originally wanted to finish the story of the series with three feature films. However, HBO executives were against this, stating that they are called home box office and not away box office. Actors Jesse Plemons and Nick Offerman were only confirmed to star in the A24 movie Civil War after the trailer for the movie had dropped. Jesse Plemons had been rumoured to star in the movie, however the actor had denied reports that he featured in the film. Oppenheimer got a release in Japan in 2024, having initially not received distribution in its release year in 2023. This was due to the subject matter being sensitive to the Japanese. On opening day in Japan, many IMAX screens across the country sold out. Director Ridley Scott had revealed that he created a director's cut of his movie Napoleon, which had a runtime of over four hours. Scott had hoped Apple would release the version of the film after the theatrical release. However, Apple have now said that they have no plans to release this version of the movie. The upcoming movie Alien Romulus is set to connect both Ridley Scott's Alien and James Cameron's Aliens movie as it takes place in between the two movies in the timeline. Director Fede Alvarez has also stated that both Scott and Cameron have seen Alien Romulus and proclaimed their love for the upcoming film. In Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven, Edward Norton, who was initially considered to play the character of Guy, expressed his interest in playing King Baldwin after reading the screenplay. Notably, King Baldwin's masked appearance led Norton to request that his performance remain uncredited. Christian Bale had originally been set to star as George W. Bush in the Oliver Stone biopic W. Bale reportedly dropped out of the project as too many prosthetics were used in order to transform him into the president. Josh Brolin ended up in the lead role instead. Notably, Bale would go on to star in Vice years later playing Dick Cheney, who was vice president to George W. Bush. Actress Sidney Sweeney was bitten by a huntsman spider on the set of Anyone But You. The spider was trained, however, she was instructed to move her arm in a way to get the spider to move. This agitated the spider and caused it to bite her. Sweeney's next project after Anyone But You was playing Spider-Woman in Madam Web. Peter and Bobby Farrelly, directors of Dumb and Dumber, had originally wanted to offer the lead roles of Harry and Lloyd to actors Nicolas Cage and Gary Oldman. Reportedly, representatives of the actors never let them see the offer. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels were offered the roles instead. 
After winning the Academy Award Best Picture in 2024, Oppenheimer is now the third highest grossing Best Picture winner of all time. Titanic is the highest grossing Best Picture winner having grossed $2.26 billion and The Lord of the Rings The Return of the King is second which grossed $1.1 billion. When pitching Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes to the studio, the film's director, Wes Ball, stated that he wanted this movie to be Apocalypto with Apes. After winning the Academy Award for Best Picture for the movie Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan and Emma Thomas are set to be knighted by the King of England. The English filmmakers will receive the titles Sir Christopher Nolan and Dame Emma Thomas. Among the movies in the legendary Monsterverse series, Godzilla Kong The New Empire has the lowest production budget, totaling at $135 million. For the animated film The Incredibles, director Brad Bird said he chose Samuel L. Jackson to voice Frozone because he wanted the character to have the coolest voice. In the cancelled Marvel movie X-Force, that was set to be directed by Kick-Ass 2 director Jeff Wadlow, Ryan Reynolds was set to reprise his role of Deadpool. However, the character would have served as the movie's villain instead of being on the team of superheroes. Before Tony Shalhoub was cast as Detective Adrian Monk in the TV show Monk, Actors Alfred Molina and Stanley Tucci were both considered for the titular role. Director Christopher Nolan has recently stated that Robert Downey Jr.'s casting as Iron Man is one of the most consequential casting decisions that's ever been made in the history of movies. Nolan recently worked with Downey Jr. for the first time on the movie Oppenheimer, which saw Robert Downey Jr. win his first Academy Award. Tayana Paris, who played Maria Rambeau in The Marvels, revealed that the cameo at the end of the movie featuring Kelsey Grammer reprising his role as Beast was kept secret even from her. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Paris stated that the scene was shot with a different actor wearing a lab coat and nothing in the script or during filming implied that the character was Beast from X-Men. Jamie Foxx was set to reprise his role of Electro in Spider-Man No Way Home after playing the character in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Foxx posted to Instagram that he would return to play the role, stating this version would not be blue. The picture he posted also seemingly confirmed Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's involvement in the movie. However, the post was quickly deleted from social media. According to Seth MacFarlane, Universal wanted to use a puppet instead of CGI when making the movie Ted, in order to save money on production. He also revealed that the studio pushed for the movie to have a PG-13 rating rather than having an R rating. Ray Winston, who played the villain Drakov in Marvel's Black Widow, said working on the movie was soul-destroying. Winston was told by producers to tone down his performance and he even tried to quit the role when the film was required to do reshoots. However, his contractual obligations meant he couldn't leave the project and didn't want to end up in court over refusing to return to the role. Colin Farrell's transformation into Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, in the series required a gruelling four-hour makeup session. The actor found the process mentally and physically draining and expressed reluctance to repeat the experience any time soon. After completing the shoot, Farrell vehemently expressed his desire to never put on the costume and prosthetics ever again. However, he has said he would consider doing it again after a long break and is expected to reprise the role in The Batman Part 2, which reportedly will go into production next year. In a recent interview, Jenna Ortega shared her belief that she had auditioned for the role of Shani in Denis Villeneuve's Dune when she was 15 years old. She recounted attending an audition shrouded in secrecy, leading her to believe it was for the role. While Ortega put forth her best effort, the part ultimately went to Zendaya, who was cast as Shani instead.
It has been revealed that Keanu Reeves was the original first choice for the role of Master Soul in the Acolyte series on Disney+. Reeves was interested in the project, but had to drop out due to his commitments in the John Wick spin-off Ballerina. Korean actor and star of Squid Game, Lee Young ye was cast in the role instead. In Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, Jake Gyllenhaal was initially considered as the studio's primary choice for the role of Batman. However, Nolan ultimately decided to cast Christian Bale instead. Despite the change, Gyllenhaal expressed his appreciation for Christopher Nolan personally calling him to inform him about the decision, a gesture that resonated positively with the actor. In the build-up to the Star Wars prequel movies, actor Joseph Fiennes was the leading contender for the iconic role of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Fiennes had a meeting with George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, to discuss the role in The Phantom Menace. However, his hopes were dashed when Lucas's daughter voiced her disapproval of Fiennes, describing him as weird. This unexpected turn of events ultimately resulted in Fiennes not being cast for the part, leading to Ewan McGregor winning the role instead. Director John Woo had always wanted to cast Joan Allen in the role of Eve Archer in Face Off, but faced opposition from the studio. The studio had wanted a younger actress and wanted to rewrite the role as a stepmother instead. Wu ultimately got his way and cast Alan in the role. In Snack Snyder's film 300, Charlie Hunnam was initially considered for the pivotal role of King Leonidas. However, Hunnam declined the lead role, opting instead for a smaller part in Alfonso Cuaron's Children of Men. This decision was driven by Hunnam's strong desire to collaborate with Cuaron, a director he greatly admired. Despite this, Hunnam later worked with Snyder on the project known as Rebel Moon. Ultimately, Gerard Butler was cast as Leonidas in 300. Director Todd Phillips has revealed that a third Joker movie is unlikely to happen. Phillips said that making the two movies was fun, but I think we've said what we wanted to say in this world. According to Michael Keaton, the success of the comic book superhero movie genre can be attributed primarily to Tim Burton's Batman movie, released in 1989. Keaton acknowledges that many people have profited from the superhero movies due to Burton's innovative vision and bold artistic choices. He emphasises that Burton's approach revolutionised the genre, setting a precedent that others have followed. Visionary director Guillermo del Toro had been developing a Star Wars movie that followed the character Jabba the Hutt, something the director described as Scarface in the Star Wars universe. The film was ultimately axed by Lucasfilm, but del Toro revealed he had a lot of fun developing the movie. Regarding the sequel to Joker, titled Joker Folly Adieu, director Todd Phillips expressed bewilderment at the criticism surrounding its significantly larger budget. The original movie operated with a budget of approximately $70 million, while the upcoming sequel reportedly boasts a budget of $200 million. In response to the criticism, Phillips questioned, shouldn't people be pleased that we were able to secure this funding and use it to employ a large number of crew members who can now provide for their families? To ensure an authentic portrayal of their characters in the film Face Off, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta dedicated two weeks to immerse themselves in each other's world. The intensive period allowed them to meticulously study and emulate each other's mannerisms, gestures and vocal cadences, creating a seamless transition between their characters on screen. Director Fede Alvarez revealed that the video game Alien Isolation was a massive inspiration for him when making Alien Romulus. He stated, I was playing Alien Isolation and I realised how terrifying Alien could be if you take it back to that tone.
In preparation for his upcoming portrayal of Emperor Geta in Gladiator 2, actor Joseph Quinn drew inspiration from two unexpected performances. Quinn found Philip Seymour Hoffman's portrayal in Mission Impossible 3 and Gary Oldman's performance in The Fifth Element particularly influential in shaping his character's development. In 2021, Borderlands began production but only received a cinematic release in the summer of 2024. The director, Eli Roth, was unavailable for reshoots that occurred in 2023. Consequently, Tim Miller, renowned for directing the first Deadpool movie, was brought on to supervise two weeks of reshoots for Borderlands. Quentin Tarantino has revealed that he won't watch Toy Story 4 as he considers Toy Story 3 to have the perfect ending to the trilogy. He stated the third one is one of the best movies he's ever seen and he has no desire to see the fourth. He said you ended the story as perfect as you could so I don't care if it's good, I'm done. Channing Tatum revealed that he has had discussions with Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, regarding the possibility of reviving his Gambit movie within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Tatum previously portrayed a variant of Gambit in the Deadpool and Wolverine film, a character who had been eliminated by the Time Variance Authority. Ryan Reynolds, who plays Deadpool, has disclosed the existence of a deleted scene in which Gambit escaped the void, suggesting that the character could potentially return in a future MCU movie. After watching Star Wars in 1977, director Ridley Scott fell into a six-month depression due to the film's extraordinary quality. The cinematic masterpiece ignited Scott's creative inspiration, leading him to embark on the development of Alien. However, before embarking on the Alien project, Scott had already been involved in the development of other films, but he scrapped these in favour of developing Alien. In the Aardman animations film Flushed Away, Hugh Jackman lent his voice to the main character, Roddy a pet rat. The film opens with Roddy selecting his daily attire, including a comic faithful yellow Wolverine costume. At the time, Jackman had already portrayed Wolverine three times, yet he would not don the iconic yellow outfit until 18 years later in Deadpool and Wolverine. Florian Zeller, the director of the film The Father, had no other actors in mind other than Anthony Hopkins in the lead role. Seller stated that if Hopkins had declined the role, he would have chosen to produce the movie in his native French language, rather than continue with the English version. The original play, written by Zeller, was in French, and the lead character was called André, rather than Anthony. In season two of The Last of Us on HBO, the character Abby Anderson, played by Caitlin Deaver, is introduced. Co-star Isabella Macid, portraying Dina in the series, disclosed that Diva required additional security on set due to safety concerns. Unfortunately, the character faced intense hatred upon her introduction in the video game. According to reports, Mads Mikkelsen had met with Marvel to star as Doctor Doom in the upcoming movies Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. However, Marvel felt going with Robert Downey Jr. in the role was the safer option. Mikkelsen had previously starred in Doctor Strange as the villain Kaecilius. Mikkelsen was also a fan favourite to play the iconic villain before Robert Downey Jr.'s casting. Director James Cameron has said he is committed to directing all of the Avatar movies that he has planned out. He envisioned the series as five movies, with the third movie releasing at the end of 2025. Cameron said, only if I get hit by a bus and I'm in an iron lung, somebody else is going to do it. Christopher Nolan's final pay for working on the movie Oppenheimer was reportedly as high as $100 million. This number comes from his initial salary, a back end from a successful box office and royalties from Blu-ray and video on demand sales, plus extra for the acclaim of winning two Academy Awards, one for Best Director and one for Best Picture. 
Ridley Scott had initially not intended to direct Prometheus, the prequel movie, to Alien. Scott was set to produce the movie and hired Carl Eric Rinch to be the movie's director. However, Scott was given an ultimatum by Fox, the studio funding the movie. They told Scott that he needed to direct the movie or they would pull the plug on the project. The Disney Plus Star Wars series The Acolyte has been cancelled after just one season. The series reportedly cost around $180 million to produce. The Star Wars series was only eight episodes long, meaning each episode cost $22.5 million to make. Stephen Norrington was slated to helm a remake of The Crow in 2008, but the project languished in development hell for years, ultimately leading to its release in 2024 without Norrington's involvement. Since his last directorial effort, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which premiered in 2003, Norrington has not directed another film. In Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan, the portrayal of the Omaha Beach scene was so meticulously crafted and authentic it prompted the Department of Veterans Affairs to establish a telephone hotline. The hotline was specifically designed to provide support and assistance to veterans who might have been triggered or traumatised by the film's realistic depictions of combat. After years of languishing in development purgatory, The Crow, starring Bill Skarsgård, was finally released in 2024. Initially, Luke Evans had been cast as Eric Draven, but he opted out in 2015 expressing feelings of inadequacy in taking on a role that Brandon Lee had played in the iconic 1994 original. Jason Momoa had also been attached to the project and production was slated to begin shortly. However, Momoa unexpectedly withdrew citing creative disagreements as his rationale. Jack Houston was then cast but ultimately dropped out due to other commitments. Director Christopher McQuarrie has revealed that the original opening scene to Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, had a flashback with Ethan Hunt and Alan Hunley, as played by Alec Baldwin. The scene would have had the two walking alongside the Berlin Wall, with Hunley lecturing Hunt on being a spy. The scene would then cut to Ethan Hunt standing at Hunley's grave. Actor Brian Cox agreed to work on 007 Road to a Million, thinking he had been cast in the next instalment of the James Bond franchise. Rather than being the villain of the new film, Cox portrayed the game controller who is a behind the challenges in the reality show. Despite it not being a Bond film, Cox said he did have fun working on the show. The scene in HBO's The Last of Us featuring a giraffe at Salt Lake City Zoo was not CGI. A real giraffe named Nabu was used on set. Before filming, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey visited the local zoo to meet Nabu, so he was used to them before they filmed the scene. Godzilla Minus One has widely been reported to have had a budget of around $15 million. However, the film's director, Takashi Yamazaki, has now denied that the film had a budget of $15 million. He stated, I wish it were that much. Emily Swallow, who plays the armourer in The Mandalorian, has said it would have been disappointing if her character had secretly been a spy for Moff Gideon. Swallow did also say she took it personally that fans thought her character would betray the other Mandalorians. Director of Home Alone 2 Chris Columbus stated that the Donald Trump cameo was put into the film because it was the only way they were allowed to film at the Plaza Hotel. At the time, Donald Trump owned the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Joel Kinnaman has revealed that he was very surprised that his character Rick Flagg was killed off in The Suicide Squad by James Gunn, especially considering soon after Gunn became the head of DC Studios. Kinnaman said he loves the death scene as it was a good way to go. In the new DC continuity, Frank Grillo has been cast as Rick Flagg Sr. Willem Dafoe had to spend four hours in the makeup chair for his role in Poor Things. 
with a further two hours at the end of the day to take it all off. Willem Dafoe wasn't able to sleep whilst makeup was being applied, he would have to be up at 3am to have the makeup applied before the day's shoot. Squid Game star Lee Jung Jae learned to speak English for his role in the Star Wars series The Acolyte. Lee Jung Jae said he is a lifelong Star Wars fan and stated that he took inspiration from the character Qui Gon Jinn when playing Master Soul in the series. In the finale of the Marvel animated series X Men 97, we get a look at a file that features details on the character Magneto in which we see the characters' aliases. We see the names Ian and Michael listed, with the surnames blacked out. This is a reference to the two actors who played Magneto in the live-action X-Men movies, Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender. Actor Gary Oldman revealed that he agreed to star in The Fifth Element as John Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg without reading the script. He did this as a favour to director Luc Besson. Besson had helped Oldman secure financing for his directorial debut, Nil by Mouth. Oldman has said he is surprised at the character's reception and the film's cult classic status. Hugh Jackman appeared as the character Wolverine nine times and never wore the iconic yellow and blue costume from the comics till his tenth outing as the character in Deadpool and Wolverine. Jackman said, From the moment I put it on here, I was like, how did we never do this? It looked so right, it felt so right. I was like, that's him. Director of Deadpool and Wolverine, Sean Levy, revealed that he had initially been offered the chance to direct 2013's The Wolverine, but he turned it down as he was more interested in doing original films. However, Levy then deeply regretted the decision and was keen to direct Deadpool and Wolverine as soon as it was offered to him. In the original casting plans for The Imitation Game, Leonardo DiCaprio was chosen to portray the brilliant British mathematician Alan Turing. However, Leonardo DiCaprio dropped out of the role and was replaced by Benedict Cumberbatch. Ryan Gosling has said that the reason The Nice Guys did not get a sequel was because of the animated movie Angry Birds. Both movies were released on the same day back in 2016. However, Angry Birds was able to make $40 million on its opening weekend, whereas, whereas The Nice Guys only made $10 million. The script for Gone Girl called for Ben Affleck's character Nick Dunn to wear a Yankees cap when trying to avoid being recognised. Ben Affleck, a lifelong Red Sox fan, had refused to wear the cap. A back and forth between Affleck and the film's director David Fincher resulted in the scene being delayed. Affleck eventually compromised and wore a New York Mets cap instead. In the movie Snatch, Brad Pitt's portrayal of the Irish traveller Mickey was inspired by a character from the sitcom Father Ted. Specifically, Pitt drew inspiration from the character Tom, played by Irish actor Pat Short. Pitt revealed that he based Mickey's voice on Tom's distinctive accent and manner of speaking. Prior to Mike Myers being cast in the iconic role of the Cat in the Hat, actor Tim Allen was originally chosen for the part. However, Allen was forced to withdraw from the project due to the scheduling conflict stemming from his commitment to filming The Santa Claus 2. The opening scene of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom features a club named Club Obi-Wan. This is reference to the character Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. George Lucas wrote and directed Star Wars and wrote the story for the Indiana Jones films. Despite driving throughout the film, Anna Taylor-Joy does not actually have a driving licence. She learned how to drive the cars during stunt training and preparation for her role in Furiosa. On her first day of training, she was required to do a J-turn. Despite doing plenty of driving throughout filming, Anna Taylor-Joy still hasn't passed her driving test. Whilst promoting Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the film's director, Wes Ball, said that it was criminal that none of the previous Planet of the Apes movies had ever won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. 
The previous films in the trilogy featuring Andy Serkis as Caesar had all been nominated but lost out to other films. Director Sergio Leone initially wanted Clint Eastwood to portray Harmonica in the iconic spaghetti western movie Once Upon a Time in the West. Having previously worked together on the Dollars trilogy, Leone believed Eastwood was the perfect fit for the role. However, Eastwood declined the offer, signalling a shift in his career as he sought out new creative directions and collaborations. In a surprising disclosure, Marvel Studios president Kevin Veige revealed that the initial choice for Tony Stark in the Iron Man franchise was English actor Clive Owen. Owen was offered the role but declined it, citing lack of interest in the film. In the casting process for the Lord of the Rings movie, Peter Jackson's initial preference for the role of Bilbo Baggins was always Ian Holm. However, Jackson disclosed that the studio had proposed Anthony Hopkins for the same role. John Cena's role in Barbie simply came about because he wanted to be in the film. Cena approached the film's director, Greta Gerwig, asking if he could have a role in the movie. He was cast as Mermaid Ken. The table read photo from Star Wars The Force Awakens featured the actors from the movie along with Mark Hamill. Hamill, despite having no lines in the film, attended the table read in order to not spoil his minor role in the movie. Hamill would read all script directions in order to have something to do during the table read. George Miller's upcoming movie, Furiosa, A Mad Max Saga, contains a 15-minute action sequence that used over 200 stump people, as well as taking 78 days to shoot. Takashi Yamazaki, the director of Godzilla Minus One, has expressed his desire to see the original cast reprise their roles in a potential sequel. The sequel, if directed by Yamazaki, would also feature Godzilla battling another kaiju monster. Within the Lord of the Rings trilogy, a massive ring prop was crafted specifically for use in creating forced perspective shots. Two notable shots are from the Fellowship of the Ring, when Frodo drops the ring on the snowy mountain, and in the Return of the King, when Smeagol and Eagle are fighting for the ring. Two men sued the film company Universal because of the film Yesterday. The trailer features actress Anna de Armas, whose role was cut from the final film. After having rented the movie to find out the actress's scene had been cut, the two men took legal action for false advertising. Reportedly, Universal settled the case out of court. Dev Patel, director and star of Monkey Man, revealed that funding for the project was pulled just a few weeks before filming was set to begin. Patel had to beg the movie's investors to provide the funds in order to produce the film. In creating the voice of the Stephen Grant persona in Moon Knight, actor Oscar Isaac drew inspiration from Carl Pilkington, the star of An Idiot Abroad. Director Bradley Cooper of A Star Is Born fame has disclosed that before Lady Gaga was chosen for the role, both Adele and Beyoncé were in consideration for it. In fact, Cooper initially met with Beyoncé to discuss the possibility of her playing the part. Director Zack Snyder revealed that he met with Leonardo DiCaprio to play the role of Lex Luthor in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Despite not being cast, DiCaprio suggested elements for the films that Zack Snyder would incorporate at a later date. One of these suggestions was seeing Superman fight the Justice League. This was included in the Justice League movie. George Clooney revealed that both Mark Wahlberg and Johnny Depp were offered the role of Linus Caldwell in the 2001 remake of Ocean's Eleven. Both actors turned down the role, which led to Matt Damon being cast instead. Robin Williams took a massive pay cut for the role of the genie in Aladdin. Williams reportedly earned around $75,000 instead of his contracted $8 million. Williams revealed that he took the pay cut as he really wanted to star in the movie and he also wanted to leave something wonderful behind for his children. Hiroyuki Sanada has revealed that he was really swinging a sword at Tom Cruise's neck whilst filming The Last Samurai. This was due to the insistence of Tom Cruise. Sanada stated, I took full swing and then stopped just touching his skin but no injury. 
he never blinked. In a deal with Warner Brothers, Denny Villeneuve secured the opportunity to cast Anna Taylor Joy as Alea Atreides in Dune Part 2. This agreement was contingent on Villeneuve delivering the film on budget and on time, despite Taylor Joy's scheduling conflicts due to her starring in the production of Furiosa at the same time. Shortly after the release of the first movie adaptation of The Cat in the Hat, producers began discussing the possibility of adapting The Cat in the Hat Comes Back. However, Audrey Geisel, the widow of Dr. Zeus, was so disappointed with the first film that she refused to allow any further live-action adaptations of her late husband's work. Director Christopher Nolan has recently revealed that he thinks that The Dark Knight Rises is the most underrated movie he has made. Nolan states, I think The Dark Knight Rises is an underrated movie. There are things in there that we did that are pretty subversive and pretty shocking. It's as close as I'll get to adapting A Tale of Two Cities. Before Josh Brolin was cast as Cable in Deadpool 2, Tim Miller, director of the first movie, wanted Carl Chandler for the role. Reportedly, Reynolds was against the casting, and this led to the director Tim Miller leaving the project. Actors Stephen Lang and Ron Perlman were fan favourites to be cast in the role, and Pierce Brosnan was speculated to have the role when he posed in a photo with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman before production was about to begin. In the midst of producing Toy Story 2, a grave mishap occurred at Pixar Animation Studios. The animators, in an unfortunate turn of events, inadvertently deleted the nearly completed project, leaving 90% of their hard work seemingly lost. However, fate intervened when it was discovered that one of the animators had fortuitously backed up the film on their personal computer, saving Toy Story 2 from the brink of disaster. Walton Goggins, who portrays Cooper Howard, aka The Ghoul, in the Fallout TV series on Amazon, stated that he didn't play the Fallout video games before taking on the role. This is because he didn't want the work he did on the character to be influenced by the ghouls that appeared in the game series. During the production of A Quiet Place, director John Krasinski initially faced opposition from the studio when he insisted on casting a deaf actress for the role of Regan. However, he persisted and ultimately succeeded in casting Millicent Simmons in the role. Krasinski also took the initiative to ensure that the cast and crew learned sign language to facilitate effective communication with Millicent on set. Director James Cameron stated Christopher Nolan should have been nominated for Best Director at the Oscars for the movie Inception. Cameron stated that I wish Christopher Nolan had gotten nominated for directing that film because I think that it's the most astounding piece of film creation and direction of that year, hands down. Austin Butler was initially set to screen test for the role of Rooster in Top Gun Maverick, but had to turn it down. Butler turned down the opportunity in order to star in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Miles Teller ended up being cast in the role instead. Director George Miller, who directed Mad Max Fury Road, recruited his wife, Margaret Sixel, to edit the movie. When asked why he chose her, Miller stated that if a man edited it, it would simply look like every other action movie we see. Sixel went on to win the Academy Award for Best Achievement in Film Editing for her work on the film. In Alex Garland's film Civil War, actor Jesse Plemons was not the original choice. At the last minute, the initial actor withdrew, and upon actress Kirsten Dunst's recommendation, Plemons stepped in to fill the role. It is worth noting that Plemons is married to actress Kirsten Dunst. Gary Oldman said he developed the voice of his character in The Fifth Element, John Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg, by combining the voices of presidential candidate Ross Perot and iconic Looney Tunes character Bugs Bunny. Rebecca Ferguson, who portrays Ilsa Faust in the Mission Impossible movies, revealed that the only reason her character wore an eye patch in the opening scene for Dead Reckoning is because she can't wink. Christopher McQuarrie requested she wear the eye patch because of this. 
Notably, snipers do wear eye patches if they struggle to close a single eye when looking through a scope. Actress Hannah Waddingham revealed that filming a scene in Game of Thrones left her with chronic claustrophobia. Waddingham portrays Septa Unella in the series. In the scene, the character is tortured by Cersei Lannister. The scene had Waddingham lying down having grape juice poured on her face for many takes over ten hours. Waddingham has said filming the scene was the worst day of her life. When the trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine dropped, many people thought Hugh Jackman used prosthetic arms in order to make his arms look more muscular. However, this was shot down by Deadpool comic creator Rob Liefeld. When visiting the set during production, Liefeld said that Hugh Jackman's arms are 100% real and confirmed it by feeling Jackman's muscles on set. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was reportedly set to be a reboot of the Planet of the Apes franchise. However, after the first trailer, it was revealed that the film is a sequel to the trilogy of the films that starred Andy Serkis as Caesar. This movie takes place hundreds of years after the events of War for the Planet of the Apes. Sharon Stone confirmed that the studio didn't want to cast Leonardo DiCaprio in The Quick and the Dead. The studio told Stone if she wanted him to be in the film so much, she would have to pay for his salary herself. Stone agreed to reduce her salary on the movie in order to pay for DiCaprio's role. In order to do performance capture for the children characters in The Polar Express, adult actors perform the actions on the set with oversized props in order to capture the scale of the children being smaller. Tom Hanks did all the motion capture for the character Hero Boy. In How the Grinch Stole Christmas, when the Grinch pulls the tablecloth from the table, all the items were supposed to fall off. Whilst shooting the scene, Jim Carrey managed to pull the tablecloth off without any of the items being knocked down. He then improvised and knocked off all the items from the table afterwards. Actor Austin Butler has said that working with Tom Hardy on the bike riders was intense. He said Hardy would be joking around on set till action was called, and then he would transform into the most intense guy he'd ever seen. The Killer has been a passion project of director David Fincher's for around 20 years. At one point, Fincher wanted to make the movie with Brad Pitt in the lead role back in 2008. However, Pitt said that the role was too nihilistic for him. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Daniel Radcliffe needed to do 95 takes when the other characters took Polyjuice Potion to all look like Harry. Radcliffe needed to wear other characters' costumes and the scenes needed to match so they could be clipped together correctly. Dave Filoni has said he cast Lars Mikkelsen in the live-action role of Grand Admiral Thrawn after the actor did the voice in Rebels. During writing, Filoni said he couldn't hear anyone else but Mikkelsen when writing for the character in Ahsoka, so he knew they would have to bring him back for the role. Filoni said that he is really happy with Lars Mikkelsen's live-action performance. Director Michael Bay revealed that he didn't want to keep directing Transformers movies, and the series' executive producer Steven Spielberg told him he should stop after the third movie. Each film did very well at the box office, with the studio begging Bay to return for more. Michael Bay stayed on to direct two more in the franchise, Transformers Age of Extinction and Transformers The Last Night. The director also admitted that directing all the movies was a lot of fun. Director Zack Snyder had initially wanted to make the Amazons and the Atlanteans in the Justice League movie descendants of Kryptonians who had arrived on Earth thousands of years ago. The director said the studio Warner Brothers were not happy with this suggestion and refused to let him put it into the movie. James Wan, director of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, has debunked the rumours that the movie went through months of reshoots due to the film originally being unwatchable. Wan stated that they only did seven or eight days of reshoots, which is nothing compared to the usual number of days of reshooting on a big budget movie. 
Godzilla Minus One has broken records in Japan, being the largest IMAX debut for a live action film. The movie was able to generate $1.2 million at the box office across just 49 IMAX screens. Actor Tony Todd was able to negotiate a $1,000 bonus in Candyman for every time he was stung by a bee, in the scene where he had bees in his mouth. Todd was paid $23,000 in a bonus for the 23 stings he received for filming the scene. Steven Spielberg had initially wanted to make a live-action Adventures of Tintin movie, with Snow the Dog being brought to life with CGI. However, Spielberg thought a live-action movie wouldn't be respectful of the source material, and thus decided to make the whole movie in animation using motion capture instead. The infamous nipple suit from Batman and Robin was revealed to have been inspired by Roman centurion armour by the film's costume designer, Jose Fernandez. He stated that it wasn't a fetish to me, it was more informed by Roman armour, like centurions. In Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, George Lucas included a line between Anakin and General Grievous in which Anakin says, You're shorter than I expected implying that this is the first time the two characters have met. Because of this one line, when Dave Filoni was creating the animated series The Clone Wars, Anakin and Grievous could not meet in any of the show's six seasons. It has been revealed that Robert Downey Jr. had auditioned for the role of Dr. Jonathan Crane, aka Scarecrow, in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Notably, he lost the role to Killian Murphy. Both actors would go on to star in Nolan's most recent movie, Oppenheimer. Tim Blake Nelson had been cast in an undisclosed role in Dune Part 2. Unfortunately, his role was cut from the final film. Tim Blake Nelson stated that I had a great time over there shooting it. Denny Villeneuve cut it because he thought the movie was too long. I am heartbroken over that, but there are no hard feelings. Actor Vinnie Jones has revealed that he was offered the chance to reprise the role of Juggernaut from X-Men The Last Stand in the upcoming movie Deadpool and Wolverine. Jones however turned down the opportunity despite meeting the film's director, Sean Levy. Jones stated that the suit he had to wear to play Juggernaut was too much drama to put on both physically and mentally. A different version of Juggernaut featured in Deadpool 2 and was voiced by Ryan Reynolds. Director Zack Snyder has said he reckons more people saw Rebel Moon on Netflix than moviegoers who went to see Barbie at the cinema. Barbie was the highest grossing movie in 2023, grossing $1.4 billion globally. Snyder says that Rebel Moon had around 80 to 90 million views, and assuming it was two people watching the film, it equates to 160 million views. If they all paid $10 for a ticket, then that would be $1.6 billion at the box office. According to the showrunners of Game of Thrones, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, AT&T, the parent company of HBO, wanted the series to be shot vertically so the series could be watched on people's phones. During the court scene in The Dark Knight Rises, Tom Hardy's character Bane can be seen knitting. This was a reference to the character Madame Defarge from the Charles Dickens novel A Tale of Two Cities. The character in the book would knit whilst watching the public executions. Christopher Nolan said A Tale of Two Cities was a major influence on the story of The Dark Knight Rises. In Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, a character from another Aardman animation project has a cameo in the movie. Feathers McGraw, the penguin antagonist from Wallace and Gromit The Wrong Trousers, can be seen towards the end of the movie with the other chickens. Feathers McGraw hides his identity with a rubber glove on his head, disguising himself as a chicken. Godzilla had first appeared on the big screen in 1954, but it took 70 years and 38 movies for the IP to be nominated and win an Academy Award. 
Godzilla Minus One won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Oppenheimer was initially not going to be shown in Japan due to the atomic bomb being a sensitive topic in the country. However, Oppenheimer has now secured distribution in Japan for 2024. Bitter's End, the distribution company, said the film's subject matter is of great importance and holds special meaning for Japanese people, so we decided to release it in Japan after various discussions and considerations. Actress Sharon Stone revealed that she had pitched a Barbie movie to the studios in the early 90s. However, she said that all the executives at the time laughed at her pitch. The Margot Robbie Barbie movie released in 2023 and was the highest grossing movie of the year, making $1.4 billion at the global box office. Roland Emmerich's 1996 blockbuster Independence Day holds the record for the most miniatures used in a movie, with an estimated 1,000 models used in the film's special effects shots. The miniatures were used to create the illusion of a large-scale destruction, such as the destruction of the White House and of the Eiffel Tower. Jodie Foster had been offered the role of Princess Leia in the original Star Wars movie back in 1977. However, she wasn't able to take the role because of her commitments to shooting the Disney movie Freaky Friday. Director Matt Reeves said that the final scene in Arkham Asylum between Batman and the Riddler took around 70 to 80 takes to get right. The scene had to be filmed over a period of two days because of this. Robert Downey Jr. stated on the Literally podcast that his role of Iron Man across multiple movies contains some of his greatest acting work, but he says it went unnoticed because of it being in the comic book movie genre. For the Iron Giant, the studio Warner Brothers reportedly wanted to have John Travolta voice Dean and Arnold Schwarzenegger voicing Kent Mansley. However, Harry Connick Jr. ended up voicing Dean and Christopher McDonald voiced Kent Mansley. The seventh Mission Impossible movie had the subtitle Dead Reckoning Part 1. However, after the film didn't perform as well as the studio had hoped at the box office, Part 1 has been dropped from the title, and the eighth film will now have a different subtitle. After winning an Emmy for his role in Succession, actor Kieran Culkin revealed he had yet to see the finale of the series as he forgot his login details to his Max account. To prepare for their roles as a family in HBO's series The Last of Us, Pedro Pascal, Gabriel Luna and Nico Parker took a holiday together. In the show, Pascal and Luna play brothers Joel and Tommy, and Parker played Sarah, Joel's daughter. Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell won their second Academy Award for the song What Was I Made For from the movie Barbie. With this win, Billie Eilish has become the youngest winner of two Academy Awards at the age of 22, with Phineas O'Connell becoming the second youngest dual winner at 26 years old. The siblings had previously won the Academy Award for Best Song for the James Bond movie No Time to Die. Phil Collins composed and performed the songs in Disney's animated movie Tarzan, but Phil Collins also recorded all of his songs in multiple languages, which included Spanish, French, German and Italian. The romantic comedy Anyone But You, starring Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell, has now become the highest grossing film adapted from the works of William Shakespeare. The film is loosely based on Much Ado About Nothing. Anyone But You overtook Baz Luhrmann's adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, which grossed $190 million at the global box office. Anyone But You currently has grossed $212 million. Rather than create a new Raw for Godzilla Minus One, the filmmakers chose to play the original Raw from the 1954 movie over loudspeakers and record that, as it was considered to be the most iconic and recognisable Raw of all. Better Call Saul has set a record at the Emmys, 
Throughout its run of six seasons, running from 2015 to 2022, the show received 53 Emmy nominations and did not win a single one. Director Andy Muschietti has revealed that they cut three CGI cameos from The Flash, which included Marlon Brando as jor Linda Carter as Wonder Woman, and Cesar Romero as The Joker. Ted Hughes's book The Iron Man was the basis of the animated movie The Iron Giant, directed by Brad Bird. The studio changed the title to The Iron Giant for the movie because they did not want people to think it was related to the Marvel comic book character Iron Man. Tatiana Maslany has said the second season of She-Hulk Attorney at Law is unlikely to happen. The budget for the first season, which consisted of nine episodes, was reportedly $225 million. Maslany said, I think we blew our budget and Disney was like, no thanks. Before Tilda Swinton was cast as Madame D in the Grand Budapest Hotel, legendary actress Angela Lansbury was going to play the role. However, Lansbury was forced to drop out due to the conflicts with her stage performance of Driving Miss Daisy. Before it was confirmed that actress Caitlin Deaver would play the character of Abby in the second season of The Last of Us, both Florence Pugh and Shannon Berry were reportedly considered for the role. The creators of the animated series What If have revealed that Marvel would not let them use any X-Men characters in their series. They will be allowed to use the characters in future seasons after the live-action debut of the X-Men in Deadpool 3, however. Director Mel Gibson had initially intended to play the role of Sergeant Howell in the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Gibson bowed out of playing the role so he could focus on directing the movie instead. Vince Vaughn was later cast in this role. Frank Welker, who had originally voiced Megatron in the Transformers series, had hoped to voice the villain in Michael Bay's Transformers. Reportedly, Bay felt Welker's voice didn't fit the interpretation of the character in the film. Hugo Weaving was cast in the role instead. Welker did voice other characters in the movie, and eventually did voice Megatron in the later films directed by Michael Bay. For his role as the Joker in The Batman, Barry Keegan revealed that he had to have a steel hook in his mouth to give the character the iconic Joker smile. Keegan said he had some concerns that the steel hook would have left him permanently scarred. Actor Raul Julia had been diagnosed with untreatable stomach cancer when he took the role of M. Bison in Street Fighter. Julia revealed that he took the role because his children were a big fan of the franchise and he wanted to appear in a movie that they would enjoy. Godzilla Minus One has been a massive success, with fans now expecting a sequel, but the film's producer, Minami Ichikawa, has said they will not rush a sequel if they decide to make one, stating, Good films are all about quality, We want great ideas, an excellent script, a talented director, and the right cast to work on it carefully. Before Vin Diesel was cast as the voice of the Iron Giant, actors Sean Connery, James Earl Jones, Peter Cullen, and Frank Welker were all reportedly considered for the role. The scenes in 28 Days Later that were shot on London's empty streets were filmed at dawn, with the crew asking people not to walk through the shots. The film had a small budget and was unable to shut down the areas of London that they wanted to shoot in. Anthony Hopkins became the oldest actor to win an Academy Award for his role in The Father. Hopkins was 83 years old when he won his second Academy Award, having previously won for The Silence of the Lambs from 1991. Christopher Plummer had previously held the spot for the oldest actor to win an Academy Award for his role in Beginners, winning at age 82. For the opening scene on Omaha Beach in Saving Private Ryan, approximately 30 amputee actors were hired and given prosthetic limbs to act as soldiers who had had their arms and legs blown off. Ridley Scott's movie Napoleon has been criticised for not being historically accurate. In response to this, 
Scott said, When I have issues with historians, I ask, Excuse me, were you there? No? Well, shut the fuck up then. Robert De Niro portrays William Hale in Killers of the Flower Moon. At the time of the Osage murders, William Hale was 45 years old. At the time of production, Robert De Niro was 80 years old. Actress Caitlin Deaver originally auditioned for the role of Ellie in HBO's The Last of Us. However, she reportedly lost the role because the showrunners thought she was too old to play a 14-year-old girl. Bella Ramsey was cast as Ellie instead. However, Caitlin Deaver has now been cast as the character Abby in the second season of the series. On the set of The Great Escape, Donald Pleasance offered advice to the film's director, John Sturgis. However, Sturgis told Pleasance to keep his opinions to himself. Sturgis was unaware that Pleasance had served in the Royal Air Force during World War II and was shot down and held as a prisoner of war. Another actor later informed Sturgis of Pleasance's service history and experience as a POW. After learning this, Sturgis requested Pleasance's advice and input on the film's historical accuracy. In the film At Eternity's Gate, actor Willem Dafoe portrays the famous artist Vincent van Gogh, and it was even nominated for an Academy Award. When the film was completed, Dafoe was 62 years old. In reality, Van Gogh died when he was only 37 years old. Frustrating and disappointing were the words that Patrick Stewart used to describe his experience filming his role as Professor Charles Xavier in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Due to the Covid restrictions, he had to film all his scenes alone, which prevented him from interacting with any other actors. Gary Oldman was recently asked if it was true that he was originally approached to play Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. Oldman revealed he was approached to play the film's villain, but he recalled that it was for the Scarecrow role, which went to Killian Murphy. Oldman rejected the offer to play the villain and asked to play Commissioner Gordon instead. Pete Postlethwaite and Daniel Day-Lewis played father and son in the 1993 film In the Name of the Father. However, Postlethwaite is only 11 years older than Daniel Day-Lewis in real life. After watching Arnold Schwarzenegger's performance in Conan the Barbarian, in which the actor only spoke 24 lines of dialogue, James Cameron decided to give him fewer lines in The Terminator. In the latter film, Schwarzenegger only speaks 14 lines of dialogue. In her recent Actors on Actors interview, Kerry Mulligan revealed that she auditioned for the role of Elizabeth Salander in David Fincher's adaptation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mulligan said she went all in for the audition and began chain smoking and even wore a nose ring. In between takes on The Sound of Music, Julie Andrews would sing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious to the children. At the time, Andrews had already shot Mary Poppins, but the film hadn't been released yet. The children on set thought that Julie Andrews had made up the song herself. Actor Christopher Plummer, who played J. Paul Getty in All the Money in the World, became the oldest actor to ever be nominated for an Academy Award. At the time of his nomination, Plummer was 88 years old. Plummer had also held the record for oldest winner in an acting category for his role in Beginners, which he won at 82 years old. Director Peter Ramsey says that returning to play Anakin Skywalker in the Ahsoka Disney Plus series meant a lot to actor Hayden Christensen. Christensen had briefly been seen as Anakin Skywalker in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series before reprising the role for live-action Clone Wars flashbacks in the Ahsoka series. In The Lion King, during the musical number Be Prepared, actor Jeremy Irons, who voices Scar, damaged his voice during recording of the song. The final verse of the song was recorded with Jim Cummings, best known for voicing Winnie the Pooh. Cummings matched Irons' voice to finish the musical number. You can hear Cummings sing from So Prepare for the Coup of the Century till the end of the song. 
Mark Ruffalo revealed that when he and his manager were negotiating salary for his role in the movie Zodiac, the studio's negotiator told him they don't want Mark Ruffalo in the movie, so he should just take the offered salary or leave the project. The photo that Kevin finds of Buzz's girlfriend in Home Alone is actually a boy in a wig. The producers of the film did not want to make fun of a girl's appearance in the movie, so opted to have a boy dress up in the photo instead. The art director's son volunteered to pose for the picture in a wig to be used in the movie. Robert Downey Jr. revealed that he auditioned for the role of Graham in Nancy Meyer's The Holiday. Downey said during the screen test with Kate Winslet, he did an English accent, to which Kate Winslet said it was the worst English accent she had ever heard. Jude Law was cast in the role instead. Author of The Godfather, Mario Puzo, was drafted in to write the screenplay of his novel, despite not having written a screenplay prior. Years later, Puzo picked up a screenwriting book to look into how to write screenplays. The first chapter of the book said you should study The Godfather 1's screenplay. Director Gareth Edwards has revealed that there is so much inaccuracy regarding his involvement in the Rogue One reshoots. It was reported at the time that Tony Kilroy came in and rewrote the script and replaced Edwards during the reshooting process. Edward says that himself, Gilroy and other writers all worked together until the last minute of the reshoots and throughout post-production. Martin Scorsese had initially offered Harrison Ford the role of Sam Bowden in his remake of Cape Fear. However, Ford was interested in shaking off his hero image and wanted to play the villain Max Caddy instead. However, at the time, Robert De Niro had already been cast in the role and wasn't willing to give it up. Scorsese ended up casting Nick Nolte in the role of Sam Bowden instead. For Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, it has been revealed that director George Miller didn't want to cast Chris Hemsworth as the film's villain initially, and he only met with the actor as a courtesy. However, Miller fell in love with the idea of Hemsworth playing the character Dementus after meeting with him. Star Wars creator George Lucas has a cameo in Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. When Anakin attends the opera to meet with Chancellor Palpatine, Lucas is seen outside the Chancellor's private box. Director Gareth Edwards, who directed Godzilla in 2014, attended a screening of Godzilla Minus One. After seeing Godzilla Minus One, the director revealed he was very jealous of the movie and stated that this is what a Godzilla movie should be like. Icelandic musician Hilda Guarnadotir agreed to compose the score for Kenneth Branagh's A Haunting in Venice because her mother was an avid reader of the books by Dame Agatha Christie. Nicholas Cage revealed that he did shoot scenes in the cancelled Superman Lives costume on the set of The Flash. However, what ended up in the movie was not what he shot. His scene was simply him looking through a portal, seeing the multiverse. However, the filmmakers created a CGI version of Cage fighting a giant spider, something that was reportedly set to happen in Tim Burton's movie Superman Lives. Actress Jessica Chastain had initially been approached to play the role of Dr. Christine Palmer in Doctor Strange. Chastain turned down the role because the character was not a superhero. Rachel McAdams was cast in the role instead. Actor Timothy Chalamet reportedly got sick multiple times on the set of Wonka. This was due to the fact that he ate so many chocolates and sweets for multiple takes during the film's production. The film's director, Paul King, also became sick several times after ingesting too many sweets. Due to Home Alone being a children's movie, Joe Pesci was prohibited from using profanity on set. Pesci would frequently ablib profanity into his lines. Pesci's incoherent ramblings in the film were largely improvised by the actor to avoid swearing. The film's director advised him to say fridge instead of the F word. Alan Rickman's expression in Die Hard when he is dropped was genuine. 
Whilst filming the scene, Rickman was told he was going to be dropped on the count of three. However, they dropped him on the count of one. His expression is of genuine shock of being dropped early by the stunt crew. Michael Caine revealed that after being cast as Ebenezer Scrooge in A Muppet Christmas Carol, he was going to play the role seriously. He would treat the Muppet characters as if they were actors in the Royal Shakespeare Company. During the film, he never gave into the Muppety world, and he never gave a wink to the audience. Before casting Anna Taylor-Joy in the lead role of Furiosa, Jodie Comer had reportedly been the frontrunner to play the titular character. George Miller reportedly sought to cast Anna Taylor-Joy after seeing her performance in a rough cut of Edgar Wright's movie Last Night in Soho. Kazuhiro Sushi, the makeup artist for How the Grinch Stole Christmas, revealed that he required therapy to deal with the stress of working with Jim Carrey. Suji said that Carrey would frequently become frustrated with the lengthy makeup process and lash out. Suji took a break from the film and only returned after being assured by director Ron Howard that Carrey would keep his temper in check. With Nicholas Holt cast as Lex Luthor in the upcoming Superman Legacy, Jesse Eisenberg, who previously played the role in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, was asked what advice would he give to Nicholas Holt. Eisenberg stated, Don't watch me. The original cut of Dances with Wolves was reportedly over five and a half hours long. In order to secure distribution, the film's length had to be significantly reduced. The studio wanted Kevin Costner to cut the film down to 2 hours and 20 minutes, but the final film has a runtime of 3 hours and 1 minute. Joaquin Phoenix was the first choice to voice Buddy, aka Syndrome, in The Incredibles, though he turned down the role. Jason Lee would be cast instead and did all of his work on the movie in only 4 days. Paul Giamatti stated that working on the Tim Burton movie Planet of the Apes was a dream come true. Giamatti said on the Happy Sad Confused podcast that if it had been it for me, I would have died happy. In Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, Italian actor Franco Nero makes a cameo appearance. Nero previously played a character named Django in the 1966 spaghetti western of the same name, directed by Sergio Cabucci. In Django Unchained, Django tells Nero's character that the D in Django is silent, to which Nero's character replies, I know. Ennio Morricone used an unused track from John Carpenter's The Thing in Quentin Tarantino's movie The Hateful Eight. Morricone would go on to win the Academy Award for Best Score for his work on The Hateful Eight. Morricone became one of the oldest people to win an Academy Award at the age of 87. Godzilla Minus One only had 35 visual effects artists working on the film. The team included the film's director, Takashi Yamazaki, who is an experienced VFX artist. The film had 610 visual effects shots, and this was made on a budget of less than $15 million. In order to get into shape to play Superman, actor Christopher Reeve sought the help of Darth Vader actor David Prowse, Prowse had been a professional bodybuilder and weightlifter before he started acting. With Prowse's guidance, Reeve was able to put on 40 pounds of muscle. Christian Bale had initially been cast to play Enzo Ferrari in Michael Mann's biopic back in 2016. However, Bale dropped out, reportedly due to not being able to achieve the correct weight in time for production. Hugh Jackman was then attached to Star, but eventually also dropped out of the movie. It took a few more years to go into production, and Adam Driver was cast as Enzo Ferrari in the end. Gary Oldman had originally been cast as General Thade in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes movie, but ended up dropping out of the project. He was later replaced by Tim Roth, who took the role in favour of Severus Snape in the Harry Potter movies. Actor Gabriel Byrne acquired the rights for Jerry Conlon's book Proved Innocent to turn it into the film in the name of the father. 
Byrne had considered playing the part of Gary Conlon, but he stepped aside and produced the film instead. Daniel Day-Lewis was cast in the lead role. During the production of Logan, 20th Century Fox desired the film to have a PG-13 rating. However, Hugh Jackman was willing to take a significant pay cut in order for the movie to secure an R rating instead. Before Florence Pugh was cast in Black Widow as Yelena Belova, the role was reportedly offered to actress Saoirse Ronan, but she turned it down. Ronan had also previously been approached to play Scarlet Witch in Avengers Age of Ultron. George Clooney has said that his cameo at the end of The Flash reprising his role as Bruce Wayne from Batman and Robin was a one-time deal. He also stated that there is not enough drugs in the world for him to return to the role. Actor Vin Diesel voices the titular character in Brad Bird's animated movie, The Iron Giant. Despite this, the giant only speaks 53 words throughout the film. George Lucas had said that when developing Star Wars, the Jedi were heavily inspired by the samurai. Lucas had also been a huge fan of Akira Kurosawa movies and hoped to cast Yojimbo star Toshiro Mifune as Obi-Wan Kenobi. He reportedly turned down the role, and English actor Alec Guinness was offered the role instead. The original plan for She-Hulk Attorney at Law on Disney Plus was to not have Jennifer Walters transform into She-Hulk until episode 8 of the series. This was changed to the first episode. This led to the VFX team being rushed to complete their work, and many have criticised the show for having poor CGI. Jason Momoa had originally auditioned for the role of Batman in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Momoa failed to get cast as Batman, but was called back by Zack Snyder for another role. Momoa assumed he was cast as the villain Lobo, stating he is one of the only characters strong enough to fight both Batman and Superman. To his surprise, Snyder cast Momoa as Aquaman instead. It is now believed that Jason Momoa will be cast as Lobo in James Gunn's reboot of the DC Universe. Ridley Scott was able to shoot Napoleon in only 61 days. Scott shot battle scenes using 11 cameras in order to shoot multiple perspectives in a single take. This meant that he had to do fewer takes for each shot. For non-action sequences, Scott tends to use between three and six cameras to cover multiple perspectives. According to actor Jacob Elordi, director of Saltburn, Emerald Fennel, originally wanted Timothy Chalamet to play the lead role of Oliver in the film. It was at Elordi's suggestion that she cast Irish actor Barry Keegan in the role instead. Composer John Barry, best known for his work on the James Bond films, was originally hired to compose the score for the Pixar movie The Incredibles. Barry did record a few demo themes, but soon dropped out of the project. Barry was replaced by Michael Giacchino. On the set of Django Unchained, Leonardo DiCaprio accidentally smashed a glass during the scene, which cut his hand quite badly. Despite this, he continued the scene. The idea was incorporated into the final film, with DiCaprio suggesting that his character Calvin Candy would smear his blood on Broomhilda's face. Both Kerry Washington, who portrayed Broomhilda, and the film's director, Quentin Tarantino, both liked the idea. Peter Cullen was best known for voicing Optimus Prime in the Transformers TV series from the 1980s, as well as many other incarnations of the character across multiple media. He was not Michael Bay's first choice to voice the character in the 2007 live-action Transformers film, however. Liam Neeson had been approached to voice the character, and even part of Optimus Prime's design was modelled after Liam Neeson. Before Anthony Hopkins was cast as Jimmy in Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder had considered several other actors to voice the robot character. Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart, Liam Neeson... Morgan Freeman and Anthony Daniels were all considered for the role. 
It was reported that Oppenheimer, which was released on 4K Blu-ray after its theatrical release, sold out to online retailers like Amazon within a week due to the film's popularity. This was said to be an unprecedented occurrence as online retailers typically do not run out of stock for films. Due to insurance reasons, Daniel Brühl and Chris Hemsworth were not permitted to drive real Formula 1 cars during the filming of Rush. Instead, they drove Formula 3 vehicles with F1 bodywork. Arnold Schwarzenegger was initially in the running to play the lead role in Robocop. Unfortunately, the costume made him appear bloated and the crew likened him to the Michelin Man. The crew needed to find someone with a lean build who was also athletic to make the costume work. This led to Peter Weller being cast in the role instead. Christopher Nolan, along with his family, attended a screening of Oppenheimer on opening night in New York City, in order to see the reaction of the audience. The screening of Oppenheimer in the IMAX theatre had sold out. Director Michael Mann had been trying to make a Ferrari biopic for almost 30 years. Mann was developing the movie in 1993 with Robert De Niro attached to Star. Ferrari was going to be Mann's next movie after The Last of the Mohicans. Though at the time the movie fell through, Robert De Niro would go on to star in Mann's 1995 movie Heat. Clint Eastwood initially planned to retire from acting at age 78, with Gran Torino being his last role, but still intended to direct movies. Eastwood went on to star in Trouble with the Curve four years later, and would also star in two of the films he directed, The Mule in 2018 and Cry Macho in 2021. Co-director of Uncharted 2 Among the Thieves, Bruce Straley, accused Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning of copying a scene from the video game. The scene in Uncharted 2 involves the protagonist climbing through a train that has derailed and is hanging from the side of a cliff. Uncharted 2 was released on PlayStation 3 in 2009. Sandra Bullock had initially been cast in the lead role for Million Dollar Baby but struggled to get the film made as studios told her female boxing movies don't sell. Eventually, Bullock left the project. Clint Eastwood ended up directing the movie, casting Hilary Swank in the lead role instead. Kevin Feige has said the reason Tom Cruise didn't end up getting cast as Iron Man because his asking price was too high. Feige said at the time Fox was looking at developing an Iron Man movie, but they were not willing to give Cruise his fee because it was too much money to pay a star for an untested superhero property. After being tasked with composing the score for Schindler's List, John Williams, not believing he was up to the task, told Steven Spielberg that he would need a much better composer than him. Spielberg told Williams, I know, but they are all dead. Williams did compose the film's score and went on to win the Academy Award for Best Original Score. Before Jamie Dornan had been cast as Christian Grey in Fifty Shades of Grey, actor Charlie Hunnam had been cast in the role. The actor reportedly was forced to drop out due to the commitments on his television series Sons of Anarchy and Guillermo del Toro's movie Crimson Peak. Disney executives questioned James Gunn as to why he wanted to cast Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. The studio didn't get why they would pay Cooper to do a different voice to his own and for him to not show his face. Gunn stated that he cast Cooper because he is a great actor and that's the point, he is creating a character. During the filming of The Hateful Eight, Kurt Russell accidentally destroyed a 150-year-old antique guitar. The real guitar was supposed to be swapped out for a replica for the actor to break. The real guitar was not replaced during the take, and in the scene, Russell ended up smashing the antique guitar, destroying it beyond repair. After this incident, the Martin Guitar Museum, who provided the antique for the film, said they would never lend out a guitar for filming ever again. Christopher Nolan said there was no plan B in regards to casting David Bowie as Nikola Tesla in The Prestige, 
Bowie initially turned down the role, however Christopher Nolan personally visited Bowie and convinced him that he was the only person who could play the part. It then only took a few minutes for Bowie to accept the role. Despite writing the original screenplay for Fast and Furious, the first instalment in the Fast and Furious franchise, writer and director David Ayer has said he has nothing to show for it and receives no residuals from the massive profit the movie franchise has made. To date, the Fast and Furious franchise has made around $7.5 billion globally. Steven Spielberg was originally attached to direct the movie Maestro about Leonard Bernstein. Bradley Cooper was still attached to start at the time. However, after Spielberg had seen Bradley Cooper's directorial debut with A Star Is Born, Spielberg said that Cooper should direct the film instead. Actor Jacob Elordi, who plays Elvis Presley in the movie Priscilla, has said that most of his knowledge about the singer came from the Disney animated movie Lilo and Stitch. Florence Pugh, who portrays Jean Tatlock in Oppenheimer, said that Christopher Nolan had apologised to her for how small her role was. Pugh didn't mind and was very keen to work with the director. She said she'd happily be in the background of a scene making coffee if it meant she could work with him. Pugh also stated that Christopher Nolan has the utmost respect for every single person who is working on the set. Christopher Nolan cut around 30 days off of the Oppenheimer shoot from about 85 days to around 57 days. He did this as he wanted to free up more of the film's $100 million budget so he could build a replica of Los Alamos from scratch rather than relying on CGI to fill in the backgrounds. The lineup scene in The Usual Suspects was supposed to be a serious scene. However, Kevin Pollock revealed that they did a full day of filming for the scene and all the actors couldn't keep a straight face, which led them all messing around all day. He said Benicio Del Toro also farted 12 times in a row during filming, which led to lots of laughter from the other actors. The scene that ended up in the movie was one of these takes and not one of the serious ones they filmed at the start of the day. James Gunn has said the new lineup of the Guardians of the Galaxy at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was handpicked by him and not forced upon him by Marvel Studios. The new team is led by Rocket Raccoon and features Groot, Kraglin, Cosmo, Adam Warlock and Thyla. When Margot Robbie pitched her idea of the Barbie movie to Warner Brothers, the actress stated the film would be able to make $1 billion at the box office. Robbie said this as she wanted them to make the movie, however the film exceeded the billion dollar expectations to become the highest grossing movie of 2023. Barbie was able to cross the billion dollar mark after 17 days of being released. Barbie has made about $1.4 at the box office to date. At 1 hour 45 minutes in length, The Marvels is the shortest movie from Marvel Studios to date. The previous holders were Thor The Dark World and The Incredible Hulk, which ran at 1 hour and 52 minutes in length. Director Martin Scorsese has said you should show cinema some respect in regards to his movie Killers of the Flower Moon's three and a half hour runtime. Scorsese says people will sit through five hours of TV in one go and he also cited that audiences will watch plays in theatres that last as long as his film. In order to portray Leonard Bernstein, Bradley Cooper spent six years learning how to conduct music as he wanted to make the scenes where he composed as authentic as possible. All the preparation was for six minutes and 21 seconds of composing, which was recorded live during the production of Maestro. Lily Gladstone, who had been unsuccessful in finding acting work during the COVID-19 pandemic, was considering changing careers and enrolling in a data analytics course. However, she received an email inviting her to audition for none other than Martin Scorsese for a role in Killers of the Flower Moon. 
Actor David Coronsweat allegedly auditioned for the role of Adam Warlock in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, a role which went to Will Poulter. Coronsweat has now been cast in James Gunn's next project, Superman Legacy, as Clark Kent, aka Superman. James Wan, director of Aquaman and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, has revealed that his cancelled spin-off movie, The Trench, was actually a secret Black Manta movie. The director said when the movie didn't go ahead, a lot of the ideas from the project ended up being used in Black Manta's character in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom instead. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who plays live-action General Hera Sedula in the Ahsoka series, expressed gratitude that the makeup team was able to reduce her makeup process to around an hour during production. At first, the process took a lot longer, but as production went on, the makeup team was able to speed up the process without a decline in quality. Christopher Nolan has revealed why some viewers have difficulty hearing the dialogue in his films, including Oppenheimer. He does not use ADR, automated dialogue replacement, which is when actors re-record their dialogue in a studio to improve the audio quality. Nolan prefers to use the audio from the original performance, stating that he likes to use the performance that was given in the moment, rather than the actor re-voicing it later. He acknowledges that this is an artistic choice that some people disagree with, but he believes it is the best way to capture the actor's performance. Coco, the dog who plays Sari in Prey, was a rescue dog from a shelter and had no prior training. She began training on the set of Prey and would often ruin takes just by running off randomly. Despite this, she was included in more and more scenes as filming progressed. Heath Ledger ad-libbed an iconic scene of the Joker clapping after he was imprisoned in The Dark Knight. During the take, the police officers clapped to congratulate Gordon on his promotion to commissioner. Ledger began clapping along with the other actors. Christopher Nolan saw this and included the clapping in future takes, and it made it into the final cut of the movie. Ridley Scott, director of Napoleon, has revealed that there is a four and a half hour director's cut of the film, which he hopes to release one day. The director's cut features much more of Vanessa Kirby's Empress Josephine. The theatrical release of the film is said to only be around two hours and 40 minutes in length. Zombieland features Bill Murray playing a version of himself in the movie but was not the only actor who was approached to have a cameo in the film. Patrick Swayze was approached to have a cameo similar to what Bill Murray had, but turned it down because of his illness. Other actors approached a cameo as zombies included Joe Pesci, Mark Hamill, Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Bacon, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Matthew McConaughey. Keanu Reeves reportedly pushed for his character to be killed off in John Wick Chapter 4. An alternate ending showed John Wick having survived without a doubt as he looked on at his grave. However, the studio wanted to respect the actor's wishes and leave it more ambiguous to the fate of the character. Despite the push for John Wick to be killed off, Reeves says he would return for a fifth movie in a heartbeat. Matthew McConaughey's chest thumping and humming in The Wolf of Wall Street was just something the actor did to warm up. It was at Leonardo DiCaprio's request that they incorporate it into the movie. This scene has since become iconic. In The Shawshank Redemption, Tim Robbins' character Andy Dufresne asks Morgan Freeman's character Red, Why do they call you Red? To which he responds, Maybe because I'm Irish. This is a reference to the original novella by Stephen King, in which Red was a red-haired Irishman. At one point, Harrison Ford was set to play the role in the film. Director Sam Raimi had pushed for his friend and longtime collaborator Bruce Campbell for the lead role in Darkman, but the studio wanted a bigger star. Liam Neeson was cast in the role, but Campbell was able to have a cameo at the end of the film as the final disguise of the titular Darkman. The end credits scene for Shazam! Fury of the Gods was supposed to feature the members of the Justice Society of America who had featured in Black Adam. 
Reportedly, Dwayne Johnson blocked the actors from appearing in the end credits scene, and the film's director, David Sandberg, shot the scene with Harcourt and Economos from the Suicide Squad instead. On the set of Poltergeist, real skeletons were used instead of prop ones, as they were more expensive. Joe Beth Williams, who interacts with the bodies in the water, was only told they were real and not props after the scene had been shot and completed. Timothy Oliphant revealed on a podcast that he auditioned for the role of Captain James T. Kirk in J.J. Abrams' reboot of the franchise. Initially, Oliphant went to read for the role of Dr. Leonard Bones McCoy, but was told that Carl Urban had already been cast. Abrams suggested he read for Kirk instead, as that role hadn't been cast yet. Despite a great audition, Abrams called Oliphant and said he had cast someone younger. Chris Pine had nabbed the role of Kirk instead. Before Hayden Christensen was cast as Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, George Lucas had met with Leonardo DiCaprio for the role. DiCaprio reportedly said he wasn't ready to take a dive on a project like this. Michael Madsen was Quentin Tarantino's first choice to play Vincent in Pulp Fiction, but the actor had already signed on to star in Wyatt Earp instead. This led Tarantino to casting John Travolta in the role. Tarantino also talked about doing a movie called Double V, with Michael Madsen's character Vic Vega from Reservoir Dogs, and John Travolta's Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction. In Tarantino's universe, the characters are brothers. Mark Ruffalo was able to win the role of Chuck Yule in Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island after writing the director a letter praising his work and stating how much he wanted to work with him. Before Ruffalo was cast, both Robert Downey Jr. and Josh Brolin were considered for the role. Liam Neeson has recently revealed that George Lucas told him and Ewan McGregor to stop making the lightsaber noises whilst filming scenes in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. The actors were assured that they would add the sound in later, and they were not required to make the noises themselves. In order to maintain creative control and to get enough funding to make Pan's Labyrinth, director Guillermo del Toro gave up his entire salary as well as any back-end promises. Despite not being paid for the film, del Toro said it was worth it to see the film realised. The 1998 Hollywood Godzilla movie, directed by Roland Emmerich, is generally seen as a bad movie and a poor interpretation of the Godzilla character. However, Takashi Yamazaki, the director of Godzilla Minus One, had some positive comments for the movie. He stated, The 1998 Godzilla was fairly well put together and a fun film. But I can understand the people who also say this isn't Godzilla. I think as a kaiju horror type of film, it is quite well executed. In the upcoming film Joker Folly Adieu, music plays a significant role, prompting some to label it a musical. Notably, actor Joaquin Phoenix showcases his singing skills, impressing his co-star Lady Gaga. Phoenix recalls an amusing incident during his first singing session, stating, I do seem to remember her spitting up her coffee. That felt good. It was exciting and boosted my confidence. When shooting Seven Samurai, director Akira Kurosawa had refused to shoot the peasants' village scenes in Toho's studios and insisted that the set was built for real. Producers were opposed to this initially, as production costs would increase significantly. Kurosawa convinced the producers by saying the quality of the set influences the quality of the actors' performances. Brian Cox had initially been interested in reprising the role of William Stryker from X2 in the spin-off prequel movie X-Men Origins Wolverine. Cox had cited that the de-aging process used in X-Men The Last Stand opening scenes with Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart could be used. 
Reportedly, the process would have cost too much money and actor Danny Houston was cast as the younger William Stryker instead. After Godzilla Minus One won an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects, the first Oscar win in the history of the Toho Godzilla franchise, Godzilla was made police chief for a day in Tokyo to honour the cinematic achievement. Tom Cruise resisted the studio's request to send Top Gun Maverick to streaming and pay-per-view during the pandemic. Tom Cruise insisted that it only be released in the cinema. Glenn Powell, who also stars in the movie, revealed he almost went broke waiting for the film to be released. Despite the film's delay, it was able to make $1.5 billion internationally and is currently the highest grossing movie of Tom Cruise's career. In our recent interview, Hiroyuki Sanada, the renowned actor who starred in Shogun, expressed his desire to accurately portray Japanese culture to a global audience. He viewed the series as a unique opportunity to create an authentic samurai drama within the Hollywood film industry. To many people's surprise, Robert Downey Jr. is set to return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he will play the villain Doctor Doom. It has been reported that the requirements for him to return was that Joe and Anthony Russo would need to direct him in Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. He will also reportedly earn well over $80 million for the two films, as well as having private jet travel, private security and a trailer encampment whilst working on set. In the Deadpool and Wolverine film, John Favreau's portrayal of Happy Hogan surpasses Samuel L. Jackson's tenure as Nick Fury, becoming the character with the longest-running role in the film series. Samuel L. Jackson previously held the record, having appeared for 15 years from his debut in Iron Man in 2008 until Secret Invasion in 2023. Steven Spielberg had initially planned to cast an unknown actor in the role of Private Ryan. Matt Damon had been cast in the role, however, before Saving Private Ryan was released, Matt Damon had starred in Good Will Hunting and became a more well-known Hollywood star. In the series Batman Caped Crusader, a significant gender-swapping twist has occurred. The character of the Penguin, traditionally known as Oswald Cobblepot, will now be portrayed as Oswalder Cobblepot. This decision was made by the show's creator, Bruce Timm, who acknowledged the lack of formidable female villains within Batman's rogue gallery. He pointed out that apart from Catwoman, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, there were limited female antagonists. Robert Downey Jr. was asked to cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine, but turned down the opportunity. He would have featured in the scene where Jon Favreau's Happy Hogan appeared. The writers of Deadpool and Wolverine didn't know at the time that Robert Downey Jr. would return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe portraying Doctor Doom. This would be announced a few days after the release of Deadpool and Wolverine. Despite Lionsgate agreeing to distribute Francis Ford Coppola's newest film, Megalopolis, the company has declined to cover the $20 million marketing expenses. Coppola, who self-funded the $120 million movie by selling a portion of his wine business, will now also assume the marketing costs. In his search for inspiration for the voice of Hannibal Lecter in the film The Silence of the Lambs, actor Anthony Hopkins revealed that he melded the vocal characteristics of Truman Capote, Catherine Hepburn, and the HAL 9000 computer from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Al Pacino disclosed that he auditioned for the iconic role of Han Solo in the Star Wars saga, Pacino has jokingly stated that Ford owes his entire career to him. Other actors who auditioned for the role of Han Solo included Christopher Walken, Kurt Russell and Nick Nolte. The upcoming movie F1 starring Brad Pitt has been reported to be one of the most expensive movies ever made, costing around $300 million. However, the film's director, Joseph Kaczynski, has denied the film's hefty budget, saying, I've never had an experience where they were off by this much on a film. I'm not sure where that number came from. 
In preparation for Inside Out 2, Phyllis Smith emerged from retirement to reprise her role as Sadness. However, Smith preferred to stay close to home in Missouri for the recording sessions rather than travelling to Los Angeles. In response, Pixar accommodated her request by arranging for a recording studio in Missouri, allowing Smith to reprise her role without having to undertake extensive travel. Sigourney Weaver had initially turned down the role of Ripley in Alien after having read the script. It was only after having seen Ridley Scott's detailed storyboards for the film that she signed on to the project. She felt the storyboards gave a clear vision of what the film would be, more so than the screenplay. Notably, Ridley Scott's storyboards impressed 20th Century Fox so much that they doubled the movie's budget. In a compelling twist of inspiration, the screenwriter behind Cocaine Bear unveiled that the concept originated from a surprising source, a Reddit post. The post detailed the peculiar incident of a brown bear in the forest which consumed cocaine and embarked on a destructive rampage before meeting its demise. Captivated by the bizarre narrative, the screenwriter drew creative inspiration from this real-life event and developed it into the film's storyline. To maintain authenticity with the source material, the production team of Amazon's Fallout series utilised digital game files for 3D printing props. The innovative approach ensured that the props featured in the series meticulously aligned with their in-game counterparts, preserving the integrity of the video game's visual identity. Yul Brynner's character in Westworld, the gunslinger, inspired other iconic characters in cinema. John Carpenter based the indestructible nature of the Halloween villain Michael Myers on the Westworld character. And Arnold Schwarzenegger also looked to the character when looking for inspiration for playing the Terminator. The scene in Spider-Man where Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker catches all the food on the tray was not done with CGI. The scene was done by putting glue on each piece of the food to hit the tray. It took 156 takes to get the shot used in the final film. In a candid revelation, actors James and Oliver Phelps acknowledged that their primary motivation for auditioning for the roles of the Weasley twins in the Harry Potter film series was just to secure a day off from school. Anna Suwai, best known for her role in Shogun, revealed that she was forced to turn down the opportunity to audition for the role of Katana in David Ayer's Suicide Squad in 2016. At the time, she was in the J-pop group Faki, and her management team forbade her from auditioning for that role. Quentin Tarantino had originally wanted to play the role of Mr. Pink in Reservoir Dogs. However, after seeing Steve Buscemi's audition, he knew that Buscemi was perfect for the role. Tarantino would then cast himself as Mr. Brown instead. Barry Keegan had initially been cast in Gladiator 2 as Emperor Caracalla. However, Keegan was forced to drop out due to other filming commitments. Keegan was then replaced by Fred Hetchinger. Brian Cox had originally been approached for a role in Game of Thrones, but turned it down due to the money being too low. Cox later revealed this is a decision he later regretted, as he loved how the show had turned out. The role Cox was approached for was that of King Robert Baratheon. Mark Addy was cast in the role instead. Ian McKellen, who portrays Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit trilogy, was recently asked if he would reprise the role for the recently announced movie The Hunt for Gollum. McKellen jokingly said he would reprise the role if he is still alive. Despite only being the second highest grossing movie of 2023, the Super Mario Bros. movie was actually able to make more profit than Barbie. Barbie grossed $1.4 billion at the global box office last year, but made a net profit of $421 million, whereas the Super Mario Bros. movie made $1.3 billion at the global box office, but made a net profit of $559 million. Fede Alvarez, director of Alien Romulus, has revealed that the sets and the creatures in the movie are all practical. The director was very keen to avoid the use of green screen and was eager to capture as much as possible in camera. He said that everything that could be done practically was done practically. 
After Charlie Sheen was fired from Two and a Half Men, producers of the show approached Hugh Grant to play a new lead role. Grant said he was a fan of the show, but didn't want to commit to anything without a script. The producers told him to just trust them and they would develop a character for him by the time shooting came around. However, Grant declined to sign on. Before Ben Affleck was cast as Batman, actor Josh Brolin was considered for the role. Brolin said that the role was interesting to him and he would consider doing the role some day. Brolin would later go on to play two characters for Marvel instead of a character for DC Comics. He played Cable in Deadpool 2 and Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Initially, Steve McQueen, the director for the film Shame, aimed to situate the movie in London. However, he faced challenges in securing funding for the project in the British capital. To overcome this obstacle, McQueen decided to relocate the film setting to New York City. This strategic change enabled him to obtain the budget of $6 million, allowing the production to proceed as planned. Christopher Eccleston has revealed he was offered a role in the movie Billy Elliot, but turned down the opportunity after reading the script. The working-class actor called the script offensive and said the film was a middle-class view of the working-class experience made for the American market. The remake of The Lion King was promoted as a live-action adaptation, but really just to use photorealistic animations. However, the director John Favreau said he inserted a single in-camera shot into the movie. Favreau said there are 1490 rendered shots created by animators and CG artists. I slipped in one single shot that we actually photographed in Africa to see if anyone would notice. It is the first shot of the movie that begins the circle of life. The animatronic mascots in the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie will be played by actors in costumes rather than solely be CGI. The costumes have been enlarged to accommodate actors so they can walk around and perform on set in the animatronic costumes. Matthew Vaughan, who directed X-Men First Class, was initially set to return as director for X-Men Days of Future Past. When he was attached to the film, Josh Hellman had been cast as Kane Marco, aka Juggernaut, and was going to be used to break Magneto out of the prison instead of Quicksilver. When Fawn dropped out of the project, Juggernaut was scrapped, however Josh Hellman was cast to play William Stryker instead. Man of Steel had originally been conceived as a standalone trilogy in the same vein as The Dark Knight. Christopher Nolan had written the Man of Steel screenplay with David S. Goyer, and they had planned this to be a trilogy not connected to the larger continuity of other DC properties. Nolan even handpicked Zack Snyder to direct the film. It was only after Warner Brothers saw the box office results for The Avengers that they wanted to link Man of Steel to other DC heroes so they could build a Justice League franchise on par with what Marvel Studios had done with The Avengers. Ridley Scott's movie Kingdom of Heaven was heavily cut down for the theatrical release as the studio felt the movie was too long. When the film came out, critics were not too positive about the movie. Because of this, Scott released his director's cut, which added around 45 minutes of scenes back into the movie. With the director's cut, more context and other plot points were covered, which made the film flow a lot better. Many critics praise the director's cut as a breathtaking historical epic. Due to the high insurance costs, Adam Driver was prohibited from driving classic Ferraris on the set of Michael Mann's biopic Ferrari. Driver stated that he drove newer Ferraris on a track during pre-production, but the older vintage cars were on a trailer being towed by another vehicle during the filming process. In American Psycho, during the business card scene, Patrick Bateman breaks into a sweat when he looks at Paul Allen's business card. The film's director Mary Harron revealed Christian Bale was able to sweat on command. Bale was able to do this for multiple takes, and managed to start at the exact time for every take they did for this scene. 
Emma Thomas, the producing partner and wife of Christopher Nolan, said that the box office performance for Oppenheimer exceeded their expectations. Thomas said that it was a pipe dream for Oppenheimer's opening weekend to surpass Dunkirk, but it ended up making almost twice as much at the box office. Zombieland was actually written as a television pilot, but needed to be heavily rewritten in order for it to work as a feature film. One of the leftovers from the TV pilot was the zombie kill of the week. This was going to feature at the end of every episode of the TV series. Christopher Nolan has revealed that his favourite moment in the movie business was telling actor Killian Murphy that he was to be cast in the lead role in Oppenheimer. Nolan had previously worked with Murphy in smaller roles in Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, Inception, The Dark Knight Rises, and Dunkirk. Stephen King, iconic horror writer, said A Quiet Place is an extraordinary piece of work, terrific acting, but the main thing is the silence, and how it makes the camera's eye open wide in a way few movies manage. The film's star and director John Krasinski has said that King's comments were the single greatest compliment he received for the film. Andrew Garfield has said that reprising his role of Spider-Man in Spider-Man No Way Home was a healing experience. Garfield had previously only starred in The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, with his third movie in the trilogy being cancelled by Sony before another reboot. Many fans consider Garfield's performance in No Way Home to be a standout and have even called for the actor to reprise his role again in the future. Before Timothy Dalton had been cast to play James Bond in The Living Daylights, he had been approached by producers back in 1969 to play the role as Sean Connery's replacement in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Dalton said at the time he was too young to play the character. He was then offered the role again in For Your Eyes Only, but turned it down as he didn't like the direction the Bond series was going at the time. Gary Oldman received his first Oscar nomination for the role of George Smiley in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and after the acclaim the film received, there was talk that Oldman would portray Smiley once again in the sequel called Smiley's People. However, it has been alleged that the son of John le Carré, author of the Smiley novels, blocked the film from getting made. In Martin Scorsese's captivating film Goodfellas, his mother, Catherine Scorsese, makes a memorable appearance playing the character of Mrs DeVito. Remarkably, all of her scenes were improvised without a script. The only guidance she received from her son was to portray a motherly demeanour in the scene. Catherine's creativity shone through as she conceptualised the entire sequence of cooking food for the boys at 2am, adding an authentic touch to the film. In the film 1917, the intention was to portray it as a continuous, unbroken shot. However, Roger Deakins, the film's cinematographer, disclosed that although the movie gives the impression of being a single, fluid sequence, there are actually approximately 48 skillfully hidden edits, seamlessly integrated to maintain this illusion. Opera singer Lucio Pavarotti was approached to perform a song for the soundtrack for Gladiator. Pavarotti turned down the opportunity, but after seeing the movie, he regretted his decision deeply. Actor Russell Crowe had been offered the role of Aragorn in The Lord of the Rings by Peter Jackson, which would have seen the actor make a hundred million dollars in a back-end gross deal. Crowe, however, turned down the role, believing he wasn't the director's first choice. Daniel Day-Lewis was reportedly offered the role but turned it down, with both Vin Diesel and Nicolas Cage auditioning for the role. Stuart Townsend had been cast in the role, but was let go after four days, as he was deemed too young for the role. Jackson then offered Viggo Mortensen the role. Sean Connery had always been the first choice of director Steven Spielberg to play Indiana Jones' father in The Last Crusade. This is partly due to the fact that Steven Spielberg had always wanted to direct a James Bond film. Indiana Jones had been pitched as a Bond movie without the gadgets. 
it was revealed that if Connery had turned down the role, Gregory Peck, Christopher Plummer and John Pertwee would be considered for the role instead. Before Jack Black was cast as Carl Denham in King Kong, Peter Jackson had envisioned either Robert De Niro or George Clooney in the role. At one point, Jackson had approached Ian McKellen for the role, having worked with him on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. McKellen turned down the opportunity due to his commitments to a theatre production in London at the time. Olivia Colman initially had a small role in the movie Barbie and shot the scene alongside Helen Mirren, but ultimately the scene was cut. Colman would have come in drunk and attempted to take over the narrator role from Helen Mirren halfway through the movie. In Peter Jackson's King Kong movie, the distinctive and thunderous roar of Kong was skillfully crafted by utilising a unique technique. A lion's roar was recorded and... Through technological manipulation, it was played backward at half its original speed. It is alleged that Joaquin Phoenix attempted to depart from Ridley Scott's movie Napoleon due to dissatisfaction with the storyline's direction. The actor had expressed an ultimatum, threatening to leave the project unless Paul Thomas Anderson was brought on board to revise the script. However, Phoenix eventually backed down on his ultimatum and continued to star in the movie. During the filming of The Departed, Mark Wahlberg's effortless transition back to his native Boston accent left an indelible mark on director Martin Scorsese. The distinctiveness and intensity of Wahlberg's accent was so striking that Scorsese couldn't resist playfully suggesting the need for subtitles to ensure complete understanding of the actor's lines. Dennis Hopper was initially cast as Christoph in The Truman Show, however he left the project after just a single day of filming. Ed Harris was cast as his replacement at the very last minute. Ed Harris was able to earn an Oscar nomination in the Best Supporting Actor category for the role. In the film Hillbilly Elegy, actress Glenn Close's performance garnered an unexpected duality of accolades, an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress, and, simultaneously, a Golden Raspberry, also known as a Razzie, for Worst Supporting Actress for the same role. According to reports, Captain America Brave New World is set to be one of the most expensive films of all time. The film allegedly has a production budget of around $350 million. In the X-Men film, the decision to outfit the team in leather suits was influenced by the success of The Matrix. According to Kevin Feige, studio executives recognised the popularity of the Matrix and opted to have the X-Men don similar black leather attire, hoping to capitalise on the trend. Despite Westworld's untimely cancellation after four seasons, showrunner Jonathan Nolan remains determined to complete his vision for the series. Describing himself as a completionist, Nolan had initially envisioned five seasons for Westworld before HBO's decision to cancel the show. The Lost World Jurassic Park features a cameo from the film's screenwriter David Kirp. During a scene at the end of the movie, we see a bystander attempt to escape the T-Rex, only to be eaten. In the credits, David Kep is credited as Unlucky Bastard. <laughs>